What's up, cool people? I'm Matt Conroy, back with more Bible reading, scripture scoop stuff. Um, all right, so we're getting into Genesis chapter 20 today. So, really brief summary of, like, everything so far. Um, God made the world, said don't do one thing, people did the one thing. So, Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, people became more and more sinful, God decided to flood the world to kind of reset everything, keeping only Noah's family and a pair of each animal alive. Um, then everything kind of resets from there. Noah has loads and loads of descendants. Um, from there, we just kind of skip mostly to Abraham, formerly known as Abram. God makes a bunch of God keeps reaffirming his covenant with Abraham, essentially, in various ways. Um, also, Abraham's nephew, I think, Lot, uh, has gotten into some trouble a couple of times, but has been saved one way or another. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at with this right now. So Abraham has also had one son, Ishmael, through a, a servant, actually his wife's servant, uh, but God has said, no, you're going to have a, a son through your own wife, Sarah. That still has yet to happen. But anyway, all right. Chapter 20. Abraham moved south to the Negev and lived for a while between Kadesh and Shur, and he moved on to Gerar. While, while living there as a foreigner, Abraham introduced his wife Sarah by saying, She is my sister. So King Abimelech of Gerar sent for Sarah and had her brought to him at his palace. Gee, doesn't this sound familiar? <laughs> Sounds a lot like the thing that happened in Egypt... And once again, we have him moving south. Um, but anyway, uh, verse 3, But that night God came to Abimelech in a dream and told him, You are a dead man, for that woman you have taken is already married. But Abimelech had not slept with her yet, so he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Didn't Abraham tell me she is my sister? And she herself said, yes, he is my brother. I acted in complete innocence. My hands are clean. So, yeah, so in, in Egypt, there were, there were plagues that came upon Pharaoh's house when, you know, he married, I think, or they just had relations with... Sarah and Abimelech has ideas of doing the same thing, but then there's a dream where he basically is warned that uh, it's, you took a man, you took another man's wife. That's a bad thing. <laughs> um, but. He hadn't really done anything as of yet. As some might say, he had not uh, yet consummated the marriage. So he's like, well, I haven't done anything yet. I mean, thanks for the warning, but like, you really gonna, you really gonna kill me when I haven't even like, I haven't even slept with Sarah. I haven't done, I haven't done anything. All, all I all I did was marry her because I thought it was totally fine. Um, verse 6. In the dream, God responded, 
Yes, I know you are innocent. That's why I kept you from sinning against me, and why I did not let you touch her. Now return the woman to her husband, and he will pray for you, for he is a prophet. Then you will live. But if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that you and all your people will die. So it truly was meant as a warning, it seems. God telling Abimelech that he would die. Um, but, you know, now it's kind of laid out a bit clearer that, okay, if, if you, if you fix this, if you give her back, then, then you'll be fine. But if you, if you try and keep Sarah as your wife, then... You're dead meat, dude. (laughs) Anyway, uh, verse 8. Abimelech got up early the next morning and quickly called all his servants together. When he told them what had happened, his men were terrified. Then Abimelech called for Abraham. What have you done to us? he demanded. What crime have I committed that deserves treatment like this, making me and my kingdom guilty of this great sin? No one should ever do what you have done. Whatever possessed you to do such a thing? See, so... Abimelech responds a bit more aggressively than... uh, the king slash pharaoh of Egypt in in a similar situation. Because pharaoh was just like, okay... I... This has brought nothing but trouble upon me. Be gone. (laughs) But Abimelech's like, yo, what's wrong with you, dude? (laughs) Like, you told me this was fine. This is not fine. All right? But anyway, um, so verse 11, Abraham replied, I thought this is a godless place. They will want my wife and will kill me to get her. And she really is my sister, for we both have the same father, but different mothers. And I married her. When God called me to leave my father's home and to travel from place to place, I told her, do me a favor. Wherever we go, tell people that I am your brother. Okay, so this is where I had that earlier idea, which was correct, apparently, of them being like, Half siblings. So, I mean, that that's I guess why they went with that particular lie to try and you know save Abraham from getting killed because it's like well it's not a complete lie. We are related. We've got the same father, but not the same mother. Which makes them half siblings, step siblings, whatever. Anyway. So, yeah, um, the, 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 the concern of it being a godless place, I mean, this, this has made all the clearer you know, after reading the last chapter of, you know, the, the, the fear that Abraham would have had with it being quote, a godless place. Cause if it's anything like Sodom and Gomorrah were even like kind of halfway like that, I think his fear of being killed for his wife was kind of justified. I mean, it was certainly, you know, realistic. (laughs) Or maybe reasonable is a better word there. But yeah, uh, it's still not exactly great. But, as people say, when you assume things, (laughs) and I will not go any further with that statement, uh, let's just say it can make people look dumb. So anyway, verse 14. 
then Abimelech took some of his sheep and goats, cattle and male and female servants, and he presented them to Abraham. He also returned his wife Sarah to him. Then Abimelech said, Look over my hand and choose any place, or sorry, look over my land and choose any place where you would like to live. And he and Sarah, or he, and he said to Sarah, Look, I am giving your, I am giving your brother a thousand pieces of silver, in the presence of all these witnesses. This is to compensate you for any wrong I may have done to you. This will settle any claim against me, and your reputation is cleared. So, uh, uh, Abimelech goes hard on trying to make up for any potential wrongdoing that he did, even though he really didn't do much. I mean, he didn't sleep with her, he didn't, like... He pretty much just had the idea of, you know, marrying her and all that, but that was it. But still, uh, I guess because, especially because God said, you know, to talk to Abraham and basically, at, well, it's it. God just said Abraham will pray for you, for he's a prophet. Um, I guess Abimelech wanted to, you know, give as positive an impression as possible to, you know, hopefully be in Abraham's good graces <laughs> for those prayers. Um, and I guess, you know, if there was any thought of, you know, compensating or being able to pay off a particular debt because of this wrongdoing, that's what the 30 or 30 that's what the thousand pieces of silver was for so yeah he's pretty much doing everything he can to rectify the situation so anyway verse 17 then abraham prayed to god and god healed abimelech his wife and his female servants so they could have children for the Lord had caused all the women to be infertile because of what happened with Abraham's wife, Sarah. Okay, it doesn't say what exactly they were healed of because it said Abimelech was healed as well. Unless he was also just, like, cursed with infertility because of that. Anyway, so that's really it for this chapter. I kind of breezed right through that. So, it's... That kind of sit that situation may have cleared up a bit the the, the previous instance with with Pharaoh and why he would have given all this stuff to Abraham then Abram uh, that because you know it was kind of like a, a a price to pay or like, you know, making up a debt, paying back a debt that would have been incurred for the wrongdoing, in essence. At least that's the impression I get. As well as, you know, trying to leave a, a, a good, leave things on as positive a note as possible. I don't know if Pharaoh would have been told the same kind of thing to, you know, like that, that Abraham would pray for him. But in this case, that was made clear. So there may have been that kind of motivation going on the previous time as well. I don't know, but there, there there's a lot of similarities, <laughs> but th this time around it, we, we did outright get the statement from Abraham that, okay, yes, saying Sarah's his sister is not a total lie. It's also not quite the truth, but <laughs> in any case, I guess that does it for this time around. Um, I will say, as I'm wrapping this up, I have an idea of eventually, like, kind of, 
doing a, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it that gets the point across other than doing like an abbreviated or abridged Bible. I, I, I kind of had the th- this thought that I might just take like a verse or two from each chapter and try and summarize the whole Bible, you know, as I get through this. I might just do like one one book at a time and have those as individual playlists and then kind of smash all those playlists together into one. That's probably how it's eventually going to work. But anyway, um, so possibly after I finish up Genesis, which is still going to be a while, but <laughs> possibly when I finish up Genesis, uh, maybe be on the lookout for something like that. But anyway, that, that's still a ways to go, so I won't spend too long talking about it. For now, that's it. So, as always, like the video if you enjoyed it, share it with others if you want them to see. Uh, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to get updates when I post new stuff so you won't miss anything. Look down in the description for info on other social media pages and how to find and follow and interact and all that good stuff. And of course, leave comments down below all that with any thoughts that you have whether it's related to this or other video ideas or whatever. So anyway, that's it. Hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I will see you for the next video. But until then, stay cool, people.